Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odul Sinas Wrap. Today I want to uh, share with you those wonderful envelopes that I've created. And this video will be showing you the, the process. So it's a tutorial craft with me type of video um, to create those gorgeous envelopes. So I created three in real while I was um having all the supplies with me but in this video we'll just create one to go with uh, the slim long journals that i've created in the last video so i hope you'll like it and inspires some of you To start with, I backed one of my coffee stain paper with some tracing paper and I just glued on the edges of the paper. Now I'm sewing a little lace on one of the side just for a little finished touch. And then I'm gonna fold the, the paper to create the structure of the envelope. As you can see, we see the tracing paper that has been glued on the other side of the coffee stain paper, the one with the pattern. And I'm just folding to the sizes that I want. It's really not so bad or so important if you do it a little bit bigger or, or less where, where you fold. Now, I'm doing the stitching on the from the good side of the paper because I don't know if your machine is like me but I always have some issues with the tension of the thread on the um, at the back of the paper so I definitely don't want to have the back of the thread showing at the top of my envelope so I keep in mind that I want an envelope that goes with that. So I'm in the pink, white, beige, shabby chic style. So let's start with, I'm going to start with one. I'll do one with uh, a design printed. And the others do not really have like flowers. So I'm going to add a little touch of design by adding a paper on it. So I'll start with, without the paper, but you'll see. <clears throat> so inside, <clears throat> we have the lace. And what I like is that I glued just on the edges a tracing paper that has been coffee stained as well. We can see here, there's a stain. But we still see the pattern at the back. So... Um, it's really in, in an interesting envelope, I find, with the lace. And yeah, this will be gorgeous. So I decided to start using my <clears throat> doilies because there's a lady at church, Catherine, and she loves shopping to thrift stores. And she... She's finding stuff for me, which is amazing. So she brought me that yesterday. Wow, that's awesome. Ah, oh, I'm so... I wouldn't say lucky. I am lucky, yeah, but... Spoiled, too. But before that, I'm so blessed. All right, so I'm just cutting a little piece. So this will do like a hang out at the bottom of my envelope like that. I can glue it right away. It's already great just as is, but I think I should have a little pinch of pink. So I took all of my scraps with me of that pink pillow case that I'm using since a while and let me just try if i put some pink like that or maybe a lace the lace it's too much you know you have a design there a design there a design there so i need something more solid a solid color 
like with some waves, right? So maybe this one is too large. This one, probably. If I go like that, and now this is not long enough, but I know I'm gonna add stuff in the middle. So the trick is to cut in half, separate them, and nobody will figure out that it's missing a part there. So I'm gonna use my hot glue gun, glue it, and while I stick it, I create some folds. All right, just like that. And I'll do the same here for that little piece. So I'm folding while it's drying. And if you have a hard time, just undo it and re-add some glue. I have that. Now I'll be able to put that here. That's already better because we have some pink. Okay, so what else I want to use? For sure, I'm going to use a bow with that. So I tend to... I'll start with creating the bow because I'm going to place the bow if I can find the edge. Okay, I'm going to create a bow. So this is already prepared. I'm going to play a little bit here to make it a little bit more bulky. Sometimes I do a bow like in one shot and it's amazing. And sometimes I struggle. Yeah, I do. I do struggle sometimes with my bows. Okay, this one will be perfect like that. So I don't know where it's going to be, but I'll, at least I have it done. Now, what I can do too, I love to add some music paper. So maybe I can put some music paper somewhere. Somewhere where we see it, but not too much. This. This would balance it and maybe a little bit more at the top like that. Yeah, I like it. Now, I wonder if I want a picture or not. Like, you know, adding a little girl or something. And I think because there's designs here, I might leave that one just plain. So maybe I have this wedding dress appliques that... I've been on sewing for hours. Don't underestimate how long it takes to unsew appliques from a wedding dress. I mean, I didn't pay that much for the wedding dress, but uh, my time on it, it's wow. At least I can watch a video at the same time. So I'm gonna just cut kind of a flower there. I'm trying to follow the flower instead of cutting everywhere. So maybe if I place the flower like that, what about that? And then I would have the bow, the bow here maybe with something else. I think I like it just like that. So I'm going to glue this. This is already great. And it has lots of vintage pieces. When you have good um, material, like nice looking material, like the doily and the applique, you kind of have less work. Because they work for you, they do, they do the work. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue here for this one. And this one, so I'm securing where they stand. 
and then I can add just tiny bits of glue at the other spots. So they hold like here a little bit. And maybe for this here, we want some edges that are not glued. So they are kind of loose and wavy a little bit, as long as it, it seems to hold well. So maybe like here, I would just add a little bit of glue so it holds at the corner. All right, now I placed it like that, but before gluing, let me just try. Do I prefer it like that? Oops. Do I prefer like that or like that? Do we have other options? I guess not. I love that part here, but I don't like this part there. So I guess the best is... Oh! That's why we try over and over. Hmm. I hope you're not disappointing disappointed sometimes when I change my mind and you preferred the other version ah <laughs> uh, this is this is what it is okay I, I think my favorite is still this one so let's go with this one I keep saying don't overthink the process I've heard Girl on the Ridge saying that in one of her video. I guess, I guess I, I took that expression from her. <laughs> I didn't realize. But when I've heard her saying that, I'm like, oh, rings a bell. I'm saying that and I'm watching all of her videos over and over. So I guess I took that from her. Thanks, Laurie. <laughs> All right, this is what it looks like. See, it's gorgeous. Oh, I forgot. I should have had some cheesecloth, that new cheesecloth grade 90 that I found. Let me add a little piece. So just, I'm gonna damage the edges. And if I can still, before the, the glue is completely dry, there's no real mistakes. You can always kind of play a little bit. What if I put this here? Um, it's too big. Okay. Just with waves like that. So I'm gonna put back some glue here and a little bit here, and but that should that should stick both. Just be careful to not burn yourself. Play with the spatula. Just a tiny piece like that, and I just recut all the edge. You can see I go quickly now, I, I got the tricks. Just so it's not square. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my glue gun, and while it's gluing the, the fabric, I'm gonna create some folds. hold it for a few seconds and as you can see it's kind of fluffy now so now if I glue my my bow there it's not flat anymore there's some dimension so now I'll just need to add more glue and glue the little bow all 
All right. Maybe they're a little bit too long. Gonna. This is what it looks like. And now I just need to add stuff in. Thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, I'll keep going on with my little series for this kind of these pack. See you in the next video. Bye bye.